Well, hello, everyone. Cynthia Tomain once again with Interactive Brokers, and thank you for joining us for today's presentation on RoboAdvice 3.0. The um, topic today is Hybrid Tech Reinventing Wealth Management. I'm also very pleased to have with us John James, who is the founder and CEO of Beta Smarts. Um, John's also passionate about giving people the tools to make smart decisions about their money, and so he did Beta Smarts in 2015. Previously, John spent his career developing financial products, platforms, and investment strategies for large financial institutions and startups, including his own successful investment management firm founded in 2005. John has in-depth knowledge of global markets, investing and risk management um, while running successful businesses. So please join me in welcoming uh, John James for today's presentation. And John, what I'm going to do is go ahead and pass you the presenter controls. So if you can um, <clears throat> share your screen, we'll get underway. Thanks for joining us, John. Great, thank you, uh, Cynthia. Um, and hello everyone and welcome again to this uh, Interactive Brokers uh, webinar, um, RoboAdvice 3.0. Um, I'd like to begin by uh, thanking you for you, you all for joining me today. I will, um, you know, as, as Cynthia said, certainly welcome any questions that come out of my presentation, but would be grateful if we could um, hold off on those until the uh, end. So uh, my name is John James, uh, and as Cynthia said, I'm the founder and CEO of Beta Smarts. Um, I've worked for much of my career in wealth management and funds management, and I started Beta Smarts towards the end of 2015. We have steadily grown the business with a presence in the US, Australia, and more recently Asia, with offices there in Hong Kong. Uh, importantly, we have worked closely with interactive brokers, integrating our software to allow clients to execute their portfolios with ID. So today we're going to be talking about robo-advice. We will take a look at where the market started, what the market landscape looks like, where I believe robo-advice is headed, uh, and I'm sure that the title of this webinar most likely gives this away, but here we will discuss the hybrid model. I want to take a look at where I see that impacting advisors and how you might be able to take positive outcomes from uh, some of the latest developments. So. Robo advice, two words that have um, certainly grabbed the attention of an industry, um, fintechs, uh, advisors, media, government, and regulators um, you know, have all chipped in with opinions and views about the rise of the robots. But with so much noise, it can be hard to figure out exactly what is going on and what is actually out there. So where is the market at now? And importantly, what is next for digital advice platforms? Uh, millions of dollars in venture capital investment has poured into this sector with entrepreneurs and major corporations alike all jumping on the bandwagon. But uh, it has really been the big brands like Vanguard, Schwab, Fidelity and BlackRock that have dominated the headlines and the inflows. These larger brands with deep marketing pockets have been using their digital platforms to acquire multi-billion dollars in assets. So Vanguard's personal advisor services has been the first of the digital advice platforms to reach over $100 billion in assets under management, a feat that they reached in just three years. Um, I will caveat that number by saying that 90% of the platform's AUM has come from existing Vanguard clients. Um, Schwab has a trio of digital advice offerings, which include intelligent portfolios, institutional intelligent portfolios, and intelligent advisory. These offerings all command a total of $25 billion in assets under management. And the largest independent robo-advisor, Betterment, has over $10 billion in AUM. So as of December 2017, the research firm Juniper has forecast that digital advice will cumulatively manage $4.1 trillion by 2022, with platform revenues reaching $25 billion the same year. This is a significant increase from an estimated $1.7 billion in 2017. 
Further developments have seen the likes of Betterment and Wellfront, two of the original direct-to-consumer offerings, dominate the advertising space, even while they are now attempting to remodel themselves as B2B offerings. These sorts of robo-advice 1.0 uh, propositions have been developed by entrepreneurial fintechs, using technology to reinvent traditional processes and to disrupt the traditional face-to-face -face advisor channel. Their argument being that digital solutions can guide people's investments more transparently, objectively, and consistently, providing better longer-term returns and, crucially, at much lower cost than a human advisor can. These firms initially targeted the millennial generation or people with less complex financial affairs. Many, though certainly not all of today's robo-advice sort of 1.0 propositions provide broadly similar services with limited investment and planning capabilities. As the market has matured and the seemingly broken direct-to-consumer business models have been rationalized, the next generation of digital platforms are beginning to emerge. Two key trends are appearing. Firstly, we are seeing the emergence of platforms that can augment the advice being given by humans. And secondly, we are seeing platforms that help advisors retain and manage the sticky money, i.e. the multi-generational assets that are held and managed over the longer term. But to manage that sticky money, many managers are still under the impression that digital tools are just for the millennials and Gen Yers. The reality uh, couldn't be further from the truth. Uh, investors over the age of 55 are increasingly tech savvy and seek not, uh, not only to communicate with their advisors, but to collaborate with them as well. The 2013 Wealth Management Client Experience Survey conducted by CEB Tower Group shows both mass affluent and high net worth clients over the age of 50 are open to interacting with their advisors using tech. And by tech, in this context, we include email, video conferencing, computer screen sharing, and texting. According to the Robo report that was done by backend benchmarking, the average age of clients at ro many Robo advisors is between 40 and 50, not between 20 and 30, like many people believe. So we can see that technology is not a threat to your older clients, and on the contrary, it appears that they are embracing technology. But is it worth turning to the next generation? Do younger investors have any money? Uh, millennials, who we define as those younger people between the ages 20 and 35, are on the cusp of surpassing baby boomers as the nation's largest living adult generation. This is according to population projections from the US Census Bureau. Nielsen reports that they make up 14.7% of those with assets in excess of $2 million, just behind baby boomers. Millennials are more focused on investing and doing social good, and they're seeing a return on their investment. Despite their young age and limited resources, roughly 8% of millennials have their own businesses on a par with their older counterparts. And guess who is set to inherit the sizable uh, assets in addition to their own economic success? Yep, you guessed it. So to conclude my introduction and background to the market, RoboAdvice 1.0 as an offering has limited capabilities in following predetermined rules to deliver predefined outcomes. These RoboAdvice platforms reduce investing to a formula. Their automated advice uses limited algorithms, unable to dynamically sequence and imitate human behavior and decision making in response to life events, i.e. to deliver holistic advice. We've noted some of the big brands dominating the digital advice space, but beyond the gloss and advertising dollars, can you trust an institution that's so big you are bound to lose client ownership eventually, or a platform that last year was trying to poach your clients with their direct consumer offering? Questions arise not only around custody of assets, but also product alignment and whether by choosing one product over another, you'll be able to demonstrate regulatory compliance that you're acting in, in your client's best interests. One of the key issues is where the advice is coming from. In a direct-to-consumer offering, we can see that advice is being given directly to a client uh, uh, by the platform provider. Some B2B offerings also offer advice on behalf of an advisor, 
usually under a sub-advisory agreement. Uh, and a case in point here would be a, a firm like um, Betterment. But the reality is that your clients still want to deal with you. They hired you and they trust you. They want that scalable human interaction. And this is what has been given birth to Robo Advice 3.0 or hybrid advice. Technology has an important role to play in enabling advisors to better manage their clients, helping them to perform back and middle office tasks that would otherwise be costly and laborious. Technology is key to helping advisors manage their compliance obligations, to scale their business, and to optimize the advice that they give to their clients using sophisticated big data and algorithms driven by artificial intelligence. <clears throat> Hybrid robo-advisory strategies represent a paradigm shift in the pace and path of change in the wealth management industry. Independent research house My Private Banking has estimated that by 2020, Hybrid robo-advised services will grow to a size of $3.7 trillion in assets worldwide. And by 2025, the total market size will further increase to $16.3 trillion. This number constitutes just over 10% of the total investable wealth in 2025. By comparison, um, robo-advice 1.0, those platforms that are completely automated with the personal advice service, sorry, without the personal, uh, uh, personal service add-on, will have a market share of just 1.6% of the total global wealth at that stage. Twenty sixteen research conducted by Compeer, which benchmarks wealth management companies, found that two thirds of people aged over 50 prefer face to face meetings as a method of getting their financial advice. Uh, among younger people, the proportion was only slightly lower at around 58%. So just 5% in the younger category and 1% in the older plumped for an online service. Hybrid robo-advice provides the desired combination of human interaction and digital tools. So what do these tools actually look like? A starting point is always considering both client experience and also an advisor's compliance and management needs in equal measure. We can demonstrate that by using big data, whether provided by the client or others such as the government, we can develop truly bespoke retirement models that reflect a client's retirement dreams and reality. We can develop gamified experiences to further engage clients. We can provide peer-driven results to safeguard an advisor in their compliance and best interest obligations. And we can action and document an advisor's plan automatically with auto-generated PDFs and document vaults for easy access. We can automatically tax loss harvest your client accounts. We can automatically rebalance their goals-based portfolios. And we can aggregate your client's third-party account data so that you can capture their total wealth in one place. Another feature in the evolving landscape shift by financial advisors, in, in part driven by the uh, fiduciary movement, is to implement client-centric technologies and processes that can help increase transparency, create more value, and provide clients a more active role in financial planning. SEI refers to a client-centric model closing the gap between service and value with advisors utilizing a customized planning approach that's, that's facilitated through technology and best fits their clients' distinct goals or cash flow needs. This strategy includes a variety of planning methods, including project-based, modular, holistic, and segmented planning. Claims of the rise of the robots can sound daunting. But wouldn't you rather provide a, a chatbot avatar to a client that is too embarrassed to ask you what an ETF is, or let them hook up their health wearable device such as their Fitbit to provide instant health data into their retirement model? We believe that clients want this level of transparency, and, and not only does it further engage them in their investing, but it also provides you with many more points of engagement to guide your clients further and build your relationships. The reality is that financial advisors have faced disruption before and will continue to face disruption, but the key is to keep evolving. Look back a few decades to the rise of electronic trading. Discount brokers emerged from that, and they were called discount brokers at the time. What they really did was democratize access to information. 
you used to call your financial advisor for a stock quote. You wanted to know how a security was trading at a given point in the day. And that information was only available via a telephone call to an advisor. <clears throat> what discount brokers did was make that available in the public domain on the internet. And people thought, well, this is the end of financial advisors. But financial advisors got smart pretty quickly and they upped their game. They said, well, that's fine. You can get access to a stock quote, but what you don't have access to is asset allocation. You don't have your own capital asset pricing model and you still need advice and you need a holistic asset allocation. So financial advisors continue to grow their business. We then saw the arrival of the early robo advisors democratizing asset allocation. And so by adopting technology and using data and AI and all of the other smart resources hybrid plat platforms can bring, the financial advisors can continue to provide advice, but now broader, more holistic advice around financial planning for a household or looking at trade-offs around which products you can purchase. How do you plan for your retirement in terms of your home and should you buy or sell or move to a different location? Should you fund a child's education or should you fund a long-term care policy? The advisors who adopt technology as an enabler to provide advice around trade-offs will continue to be very valuable. We see ourselves um, as increasing efficiency in your client's interaction in terms of numbers of clients served per professional. A digital hybrid enables the best of technology and human interaction so that you can expand your profitable client base. It increases profitability across all client segments and importantly, lowers the client profitability threshold, which increases the pool of potential clients and enables you to retain all assets. With added costs due to compliance obligations, we can help you reduce the orphaning of low balance clients as well as provide succession to higher balance accounts. <clears throat> By applying innovative solutions, we increase the opportunity for product upsell and cross sells such as student loans, HSAs, and insurance. So hybrid robo-advice 3.0 means that you can improve processes and be more profitable. An advisory firm's success hinges on its ability to standardize and automate business processes in order to increase the firm's value and deepen engagement with clients. As with man's last great leap forward, the industrial revolution, technology improves efficiencies and earnings. Should you be concerned about the rise of the robots? Absolutely not. Platforms like Beta Smarts are there to help you grow your businesses. Our only advice is don't get left behind. That brings me to the end of my slide. Um, I'd like to thank you for listening in. I hope that I've been able to give you some color around the market and, um, and the opportunities for you and your businesses. I'll now try and answer any questions that, uh, that anyone has. Um. I'm just gonna answer this first question. It says, uh, do robo-advisors only use um, ETFs? Um, so that's, that's a good question. Um, in fact, it highlights a theme in, in the webinar, that being robo 1.0 versus robo 3.0. It's fair to say that in the early days of robo-advice, most platforms are creating low-cost portfolios with a limited spread of assets using just ETFs. Um, and we still see that in play with a large number of robo-advisors today. Um, what, while I'm a big believer in ETF products, and indeed, you know, we've worked with some ETF providers, I, I also believe that other asset types serve a purpose. And certainly at, at BetaSmarts, we tried to build a system using open architecture um, that allowed our clients to use their own model portfolios. And of course, some of that brings with it a variety of asset types. So we're certainly one of the few robos that can use single stock securities and mutual funds, for example, within our portfolios. Uh, from our perspective, this was important for us to be able to offer continuity with wealth managers that are using approved product lists or um, have a need um, to use a specific product provider. Um, The, another question here, how do you see big data playing a part in robo-advice? Um, 
So I think we're seeing a huge shift in our society with uh, big data being applied to all sorts of industries. Uh, in the tech world, um, I came across, oh, well, I come across, I should say, all sorts of innovations uh, pretty much on a daily basis. Some of that has been work looking at things like data in the food and drink sectors uh, with for, for manufacturers of food and drink, you know, right through to smart clothing labels that can tell designers and retailers uh, when you're wearing your favorite pants. Um, the reality is that the use of big data is growing and growing and, of course, applying it to giving smarter financial advice should be something people can embrace. So from our perspective, we try and use data in two ways. Firstly, we're using government data and data from third party sources to help you better understand your client, but also for the client to have a more meaningful uh, investment experience. An example of this might be in creating a retirement plan. I can take meaningful information from a client's tax transcript and with that information, I can start producing peer comparisons that help me better understand cost of living, spending habits, and the like. What this means in practice is that the client is getting a much much deeper dive into their customized financial plan. Um, but from the advisor's perspective, you are achieving a number of things. You're giving the client a gamified experience that is preempting attributes about their financial affairs so the client doesn't um, feel like they're endlessly just answering questions. But because those attributes are based on peer-driven data, you're also offering them advice that would stand up in court as being in the client's best interest, because it's the same advice that you can demonstrate would be offered to the client's peer group. So you're ticking compliance boxes. And, and finally, by truly customizing the client's investing experience, you're also engaging the client more. This is a real shift away from most people's retirement plan, which might involve ticking you know, one of four portfolio types on a piece of paper. You're, you're better understanding their dreams, their plans, what they want to achieve. And by using that data and creating that holistic experience, you'll be encouraging that client to look at other ways that they might invest their money with you. So what might start uh, as a retirement account might end up being far bigger with your client setting up other goals-based portfolios, such as you know, a college fund for their kids or paying for a vacation or simply just setting aside some money now that can grow for uh, a rainy day. Um, so a question, how would you say the Beta Smarts platform differentiates itself from the existing players like Betterment or Schwab? Um, it, it, <laughs> where do I begin? <laughs> I guess in a, in a number of different ways, um, and, and they're, they're both uh, very different examples, but um, I'll start purely from the, uh, I guess the sort of the legals, if that makes sense. Um, Betterment, when they take an advisory client, uh, tend to contract with that client uh, under a sub-advisory agreement. Um, so in essence, Betterment is really taking control of the client, um, and. Uh, to a certain extent, you're losing client ownership to, to someone like a betterment. Schwab, uh, in contrast, use, or certainly in their advisory business, use uh, what, what they call a platform agreement. Um, so again, your, your client isn't necessarily contracting with them directly, but they are, um, in effect, putting your client's assets on their platform. The difference between us and, and sort of a lot of our peers is that, and, and this is, I'm, I'll talk about technology in a second, is that, um, you know, we are providing um, a, a software uh, platform. We are not contracting with your clients. We're not trying to advise your clients. Um, we are simply providing you with those hybrid tools that allow you to better advise your clients. Um, another principal difference is that we are product agnostic. So we are not pushing uh, towards your clients any one given portfolio. In fact, I sort of alluded to this in the in the demonstration, but we uh, sorry in the presentation, but we um, we built the platform to be open architecture. So uh, and by that, what it, what I mean is I can um, speak to you and take your uh, firm's risk profile questionnaire, for example, or I can take your uh, model portfolios that you want to use. And I can apply those within our platform um, and, and just simply digitally uh, offer those to your clients in, uh, I guess, a, a sort of a more 
a better way than than they're sort of receiving them now. Um, the other sort of uh, features, I suppose, that are, are, are majorly different between us and, uh, say, a Schwab or a Betterment is really the sort of level of detail that we go into in the advice process. Um, a good illustration of that, and I again alluded to this earlier, is how, for example, we would create a retirement plan for a customer. So. Um, unlike a lot of our peers, we um, give the customers the ability to upload a copy of their tax transcript, a PDF of their tax transcript, um, or simply answer some more detailed questions around their um, financial status. Um, from that, we were able to scrape their tax transcript for de of data, um, but more importantly, we're then using third-party sources such as the government, such as other sort of third-party providers, to start building that peer-based um, comparison to, to the client. So for example, if I know that my client is a plumber from Madison, Wisconsin, I'm able to uh, look at that client's age, income, location down to zip code level and start working out much more detailed um, sort of attributes around that client, whether it's cost of living, what, uh, what their uh, peers are spending in retirement, et cetera. And, and from those things, um, I'm then able to build a much bigger picture of the client, but what that allows the client then to do with their, with their advisor is create truly accurate trade-offs that mean that their financial plan is a much more detailed and, um, and, and realistic sort of view on where they're going to, where, where they're going to go. Um, So one question here uh, around next steps, um, is there a demo? Um, is there a, an investor view versus a management view? So uh, there, uh, we do have a demo. <laughs> um, I'm very happy for anyone to contact us uh, or contact me directly um, and uh, arrange a, uh, initially I'll, I'll arrange a one-on-one -on -one demo for you. Um, we, I uh, believe you know, it's obviously the easiest way to visualize most of this stuff is actually to see it in action. And so we're very happy to show you that. Um, in terms of what we do on, on the Betasmarts platform, we have essentially three dashboards that we use. Um, we start with uh, our client dashboard. Now this really is the tools that the client sees in terms of their portfolio allocation, creating goals, uh, managing their retirement plans um, and sort of all the sort of basic functions around that. They also have things like um, uh, an activity panel, which means that uh, they can see activity across their accounts and their goals. And this is essentially also then acts as effectively their document vault. So this is where statements, tax transcripts, things like that uh, are uploaded as PDFs. And where we're, we're managing clients with interactive brokers, a lot of this um, this data and these documents effectively come straight through onto the platform from from inter from IB. Um, the second platform, uh, sorry, the second dashboard that we have is the advisor dashboard, and this is for advisors as individuals to log in and you know get their daily update on where their clients are, so they can see a list of their clients. They can group clients. Um, so, for example, they might have a family, um, or they might have a particular client segment that they want to group together. Um, and from here, they get a high level view of how those clients' goals um, and portfolios are going. Um, they can invite clients from this dashboard um, and uh, they can see essentially uh, profiles of their clients. So if they have to make a quick phone call to a client, they can quickly look up to see what their age address, things like that are. Um, Importantly, an advisor manages their client using a version of the client dashboard. So from the advisor dashboard, they essentially um, click through to a client's account. And what they're presented with on their screen is a very similar dashboard to that of the client. The difference being it has, different, it has certain other functions, so, um, uh, or permissions really. Um, what it means is an advisor, for example, can execute a portfolio. Um, uh, they can... Um, regress a portfolio so they can they can do different things that um, the client ne can't necessarily do um, the third dashboard is um, our compliance or um, authorized representative dashboard essentially this is the firm's overview uh, dashboard and this gives a snapshot of 
all of the advisors' activities, all of the clients' activities across the platform. Uh, different permissions can be built into this dashboard, but essentially it ranges from you know the owner of a firm through to just a compliance officer having a read-only function. Uh, they can see all activity across uh, all accounts. Um, they can also manage onboarding and KYC from here. Um, so for example, again, uh, if we've got a, a client on the platform that um, uh, uh, has an I interactive brokers account, um, we can uh, auto update um, their uh, client information, KYC and AML, uh, all from this uh, dashboard. Um, I see that there's uh, a few requests for demos coming through, <laughs> through already, which is, uh, which is great. I'm looking forward to um, going through those with you guys at a later date. Um, so one quick question here, why would I use a robo platform? Um, where, where do I begin with this one? So it's a tough question. Um, I'd better need to obviously understand uh, your business to answer it. But I suppose in short, there are many reasons financial advisors are turning to robo advice. Um, and I think a lot of financial advisors have understood that there are nuances to the digital offerings out there now and that not uh, not all robo platforms are there as competition, but some of them like a beta smarts are specifically, you know, a white labeled solution. We are a B2B offering only. Uh, we've never been direct to consumer, so we've never competed head on with advisors like like some of our peers, like a betterment, for example, or, or Schwab for that matter. Um, so we, uh, we've always been um, singly focused in helping advisors. And um, with that, I suppose, you know, the buzzword that, we, that the, the industry uses, we're, we're an enabler, not necessarily a disruptor. So we're really there to, to enable the advisors to offer a better service. Um, so uh, just to give you some examples of, of why you do that, I guess, um, in the case of lower balance accounts, um, uh, we can provide you cheaper compliance driven tools uh, that mean you don't have to orphan lower balance accounts and you know we've certainly seen the impact for example uh, of things like DOL's fiduciary rule or um, and we'll certainly see uh, depending on what comes out of the SEC with regards to fiduciary uh, standards um, we're, we're seeing that um, a lot of those lower balance accounts are being orphaned or have been orphaned already uh, I know a lot of the wirehouses have lost a lot of those accounts already or they've orphaned those accounts um, so uh, certainly retaining those um, assets um, using a digital tool makes it cost effective. It means that you can retain those assets without having to bear that compliance burden cost um, and, and just sort of, you know, it means you're not chopping away half your business essentially. Um, in terms of those higher balance accounts, um, again, we're seeing you know a lot of the the private wealth houses have put in minimum balances. Um, so by using a robo platform like a beta smarts, we're we're providing you with the ability to keep that succession plan going within the business for your accounts. So you can retain again the slightly smaller accounts, even though you've put in a higher balance minimum. Uh, and that might be the kids coming through, or it might be a client with uh, you know sub accounts, things like that. So we're helping you do that. We're helping you meet your compliance obligations. I think I've, I've said that already. We're, um, we're providing transparency in the advice you give to your clients. Um, and in the, in, the, in the case of asset allocation, we're helping you to optimize your client's goals. Um, sorry, but, um, particularly their sort of goals-based portfolios. Um, and we're helping you to de-risk the advice that you're giving, or in the case of clients that request <clears throat> specific constraints in a portfolio we're you know we're often re-optimizing around those constraints uh, and again de-risking um, both the client's position but also your position as advisor um, quick question here is this a white label solution yes yeah, beta smart is totally white label we um, the only branding typically that a client sees is our name at the very bottom of the um, dashboard, which simply says powered by Betasmart. So everything else we do is um, branded for the advisor. Um, and uh, as far as your client's concerned, they are using your tool. Um, so we typically white label, um, obviously change the logos, um, 
change color schemes, uh, changing fonts. Uh, but then, you know, at a more detailed level, we've worked with clients that want other specific features in there, and we're happy to work with those clients to do that. Um, if, if I give you guys uh, a demo at a later stage, I will obviously show you a sort of more, uh, a fuller version of the platform, but we've got clients that have asked us to chop and change aspects of the platform, that have asked us to cut out certain functions or add certain functions. Um, you know, one case in point being uh, a client that wanted, that, that, that had clients themselves with interactive brokers, and during the onboarding process, they wanted the ability to um, link uh, that, that client's interactive brokers account straight onto the platform without um, without the client having to go through uh, all of that sort of uh, headache. So we were able to build that into the uh, onboarding process. Um, I think, uh, yeah, so, so we're, we're pretty flexible. We, we take the view uh, we're here to um, obviously help you guys build your businesses. We're not there to dictate what sort of platform you should be using. We're there to sort of work around your current needs. Okay, well with that, I want to um, express a great deal of thanks uh, to John James for today's webinar. Also want to remind all of you that we have been recording today's event and each of you will receive a direct link to today's recorded playback that also includes uh, John's contact information. So if you do want to get in touch with him for setting up those demos, uh, you'll find that available on the last page of the uh, slides that uh, will be included with today's recorded playback. So with that, I um, also want to thank all of you for participating with us here today. Um, thanks, everyone. Have a great rest of your day. You can all exit using the X in the upper right-hand side of the platform, uh, in the upper right-hand corner uh, of the platform. So thanks very very much, everyone. Have a great rest of your day.